started this gangsta shit. And this the motherfucking thanks I get. Hello. I started this gangsta shit. And this the motherfucking thanks I get. Hello. The motherfucking world is a ghetto. Full of magazines, full clips, and heavy metal when the smoke settles. I'm just looking for a big yellow. It's sick to the metal, Dr. Dre. Hello. And welcome to the That Guy with the Glasses finale. And what an arduous journey it has been to get here. Lots of difficulties and obstacles laid in our path, but we're not the only adventurer out there that's run into a bit of trouble. I'm talking about our own little Lindsay Lohan, our little Disney princess. And what sort of trouble, what sort of trouble has the nostalgia chick been into to get a mugshot that looks like this? I have a feeling it's not due to a feminist critique of the Transformers. Just call it a hunch. But maybe we can take a look at the uh, alleged police report that's circulating online right now to get a better idea of what's, what, what exactly happened. You know, take a look at the officer's notes. See what she did to get the fuzz to come down on her. What did little Lindsay do to get the police up on her shit? Narrative case notes. On August 12th, 2017 at 49 past midnight, Officer Garrison A. responded to a call regarding drunkenness at 257 East Main Street. On arrival, contact was made with suspect Lindsay Ellis. She was very unsteady on her feet, her speech was nearly unintelligible, and she was extremely hostile towards officers. She was taken into custody on the charge of public intoxication. While being transported to WCDC, Ellis began kicking the windows of my patrol vehicle and banging her head against the cage repeatedly. I then stopped and placed hobbles around the suspect's feet to prevent her from causing damage to the vehicle or inflicting injury to herself. During the process, she stepped on her own glasses, breaking them. She was then transported the rest of the way to WCDC without further incident. The suspect's handcuffs were checked for proper fit, double locked, and no complaint of injury was made. Kicking the windows of my patrol vehicle and banging her head against the cage repeatedly. Take a moment to just to get a mental image of this going on. Imagine a completely sloppy fucking drunk, Lindsay Ellis, in the back of a squad car, mule kicking the shit out of the bars in the back of the car, and slamming her fucking head against the window. Hey, yo, motherfucker, I don't know if you know this, but I review movies on the internet. Hard knock life's up in this bitch. You're talking to the Shirley Temple killer in here, motherfucker. Clearly, she was fighting the patriarchy in a bid to escape to her freedom. Obviously, this... This officer must have mansplained to her that you can't take a piss on the sidewalk after having 14 Jaeger bombs. And she needed to teach the fucking patriarchy a lesson. Our brave little freedom fighter, stunning and brave little freedom fighter, didn't let it get her down. And so now we have this lovely picture to remember the evening by. Now, while it's funny, I don't think I can shit on Alice too hard. I mean, haven't we all been there? Haven't we gotten so drunk that we tried to break out of cop car? <laughs> and then damaged our glasses in a fit of rage. I mean, that's a common experience I think we've all shared. Because, you know, YouTube videos, that's a tough business. You put up that 20-minute review of the newest movie, and you just want to go out and wild a little bit. You want to tear some shit apart. That's, that's how Ellis gets her kicks off. I have to admit, though, I'm a little bit relieved. For a while there, I thought she was arrested for something else. I thought those dirty, evil SJW feminists found her rape rap video and brought her up on charges of hurting feelings. If you remember the last video that I had done featuring Ellis in the compilation collection, I had to uh, get the boys together in the lab to put together our best approximation of what we thought that would be. But sadly, it just it doesn't exist on the internet anymore. But what, what can I do? I'm not Merlin. I don't have a magic wand where I can go abracadabra rape rap video up here. So logically, if you're rapping, you're probably not raping at any given time. So here we have my friend and yours, convicted rapist Brian, who's going to help us on our little experiment. Hey, can I rap about rape? Sweet! Cool, cool. All right, this is going to be great. Or perhaps I do. Oh, what do you know? The rape rap video does exist. Somebody put up a copy of it. Thank you very much, archivist, for uh, holding on to this gem so we can take a look at the hot lyrics that Lindsay wrote for the rape rap video because she was the writer on this. Now, DJ Fedora here, he's singing the song, but remember the lyrics. The hotness comes from the head writer, Lindsay Ellis. So let's drop a beat and listen to this jam, homeboy. Here is the rape rap video. See how close it compares to my uh, my speculated guess. Yo, I'm set up porno taping. I need it like a wild ape ad. My penis is bent and misshapen. 
Oops, I'm spending my nights out right there. With my hand on your mouth, cause I don't like noise. I just use cause I toys. And in your like a palm full of coys. But no teen witch cause I don't like boys. I always struck out with women, more or less. I never got no action. My life was a mess, till I found the secret to my success. Cause in my world, baby, no means yes. Yo, P Cash, take it to the bridge. It, it almost makes you wonder why Ellis would want to get rid of this, because it's really, it's just stupid, isn't it? It's so dumb and tame and neutral and not really that offensive. It's a fat fedora-wearing idiot rapping about rape. You can't spell rape without rape. And if she orders the most expensive thing on the menu, that's implied consent. Maybe she's trying to bury the past a little bit, bury, bury that past so she doesn't have to atone for her... Uh, for her sins of humor? I don't know, but I don't see what what's so bad about that. I don't see what's so terribly offensive about that that she would need to pull it down. But then again, Lindsay runs with a new crowd. She runs with a new crowd who doesn't like anything that's not very politically correct. She's re-imaged herself. You can see that in her latest videos and the way she presents them and the, the subject matter that she covers, which is a shame because it seems like Lindsay might have been pretty fun to hang out with back in the day, might have had a pretty a pretty decent sense of humor. But hey, fuck it. I mean, a little bit of public intoxication, fighting with the police, and a couple videos about rape really don't don't make you a bad person. It's not like she shot a Mexican or something. <laughs> Those Antweiler boys, they sure get up to some mischief. I'm talking about Noah Antweiler, the spoony one, and if you've ever watched his videos, the Rasslin videos in particular, you probably noticed his co-host there. That would be Noah's brother, Miles. Now, shockingly, unlike Noah, Miles has actually done something with his life. He stands on the razor-thin blue line separating us from the thugs that exist in our midst, the deep, dark criminal underbelly. Yes, that's right. Miles actually contributes in a tangible fucking way to society. He doesn't just sit around reviewing Final Fantasy while drinking himself into a coma. He's in law enforcement. That's him on the very far left there. Now, I'm sure some of you are already well aware of this. You probably keep up with the news. You might have read a few articles about Miles' exploits out there in the field doing what he does. But in case you, uh, in case you missed it, let me pick a random headline to uh, give you an idea of the kind of cop work that Miles gets involved in. Immigrant killed by deputy had troubled past. Sheriff Joe Arpaio believes Deputy Miles Antweiler was protecting the public when he held his service revolver near Castellano's head and pulled the trigger. The bullet entering Castellano's skull between his eyes and his ears and lodging in his brain. I think the deputy is probably a hero, Arpaio said. He might have saved a lot of lives that night. Now, all, all joking aside, uh, Miles was in one hell of a situation. If you actually read the fucking news report... This guy was like a, a human smuggler. He was involved in a bunch of criminal shit. And, I, well, I'll just I'll read a piece of it for you to give you an idea of what he's, what he's fucking dealing with when he arrives on scene. When paramedics pulled Castellano's body from his SUV, they found his assault rifle with more than 30 rounds of ammunition and a handgun. So he's got a criminal record. He's a human smuggler. He's already in court for something. They get called to the residence, and Miles has to go deal with this guy, and he's got he's got a fucking arsenal in his vehicle. He tells him, you know, keep still, put your hands up, and everything goes to shit. But I think we all know what's really what's really going on here. Miles calls the shots. He sets the fucking policies. Why do you think Donald Trump pardoned Joe Arpaio? Because Arpaio praised Miles' work. He's the ringleader for immigration enforcement in this country, but people aren't really well aware of that. Why do you think Noah refers to him as the Iceman, the DDT machine? Now you might be thinking, wait, maybe that's a reference, maybe he's a big fan of Top Gun. Maybe the DDT machine's like a wrestling thing. No, no, that's Death Deal and Tortilla Machine. The Iceman is coming, we need to run away before he kills us with his tortillas. Funnily enough, if you bring this up to Noah, if you mention this on, say, a, a Hitbox stream or a YouTube stream, Spoonie doesn't respond very well. Now, I think it's deep-seated jealousy. I think he's upset that his brother does something, and he doesn't. But nonetheless, if you were to mention Juan but not forgotten in any context, on any platform that Spoonie happens to be on, he immediately flips his shit. He starts banning people, 
left and right. Now, some individuals, I don't know who they are, they got into some shenanigans with Noah, uh, went to one of his hitbox streams, and uh, everything kind of devolved from there. They were saying a few things, talking about gardeners, and mentioning that his name was Juan, and he was not forgotten, and they were banhammered, and banhammered in an extraordinary fashion. And after hundreds of bans had been issued, he shut down the stream. He he completely shut it down. Now, why Juan, but not forgotten? That's not the actual guy's name. The criminal's name that uh, Miles put down was Felipe Ramirez. It wasn't Juan. Well, it's it's gone but not forgotten. You see, it's a it's a nice little play on words. But if you want the deepest lore, if you want that five-hour Dark Souls two shit, then let me let me drop a knowledge bomb on you. That night began normally for the Castiano family, according to the detective's interview with Juana Ramirez, Castiano's wife. So Felipe's wife is named Juana, Juan but not forgotten. Did I just did I just mind fuck you? Did your head just explode? Now you might hand wave all that away and say, well, you've got to be nice. Spoonie's going through a lot. Don't you know that he's sick? Aren't you well aware of how sick Spoonie is? Oh, I'm very well aware. If you were to look at any social media platform that Noah inhabits, you are bombarded by almost daily fucking messages about how near death Noah Antweiler is. I am amazed that this, this living Petri dish hasn't expired already. And what shocking diseases does Noah have? Well, he has the common things that us plebs get. I'm not always sick, but I've been dealing with headaches, and for some reason, I've had nasal congestion that's been really hard to shake. Well, nothing really out of the ordinary there. Everybody gets a headache or nasal congestion. Maybe if we delve a little deeper, we'll get a better idea of of what ailments and illnesses that poor Noah has to endure on a daily basis. I've heard you've been having some health troubles. Are you okay? 2010 was a rough year for me, health-wise. I was out of commission for quite a while with a persistent and debilitating nerve condition that the doctors diagnosed me with, called vasodepressor syncope. It's a fainting condition, aggravated whenever my heart rate gets above 130 beats per minute or so. My heart squeezes too hard when it beats quickly, and it causes circulation problems. When that happens, my heart failure drops dramatically and I collapse. It got really bad and I was incapable of doing even minor household tasks without feeling nauseous. Well, now that does sound a lot more serious than a simple headache or stuffy nose. I mean, that I hope Noah's going to do okay. Dealing with a medical condition like that can be really traumatic. It would be terrible if other things were compounded onto that. The doctors say, I have bipolar 2 disorder. Yes, I have the sequel to bipolar disorder. Bipolar 2 the quickening. Well, at least he's in good spirits. He's cracking jokes. I mean, with the heart condition and now bipolar condition, that's that's a lot to take in. But talk about bad luck. I mean, my God, what, what else could possibly go wrong for Noah? I'm not sure panic attacks cover what I'm experiencing when it's been eight sustained hours of panic. I don't feel well. Well, shit. Eight hour panic attacks, bipolar disorder, and a heart condition? This poor son of a bitch. Apparently, the test showed very, very mild sleep apnea, which honestly sounds like they couldn't really find anything. Are you telling me he can't even get a good night's sleep? I mean, staying awake all day with bipolar disorder, eight-hour panic attacks, and a heart disorder is bad enough, but when you can't actually go to sleep and escape into your dreams, what, what, that's a living nightmare. I don't think Noah's body can take anymore. I mean, sure, it might look cool, I just never relish the thought of a massive staph infection in my nipples. No, you know... When I read that, I you know, the context is missing. Is he saying that he has a staph infection in his nipples? But he actually references back to this years later. Apparently, the Ryback staph infection is still pretty bad. I had one, but nothing like this. So poor Spoonie. He's got a heart condition. He's got bipolar disorder. He's got eight-hour panic attacks. He can't go to sleep because of the apnea. And his nipples have a staph infection. When When will this suffering end? A kidney stone, shingles, and now acute bronchitis all in one week. At this point, I'm pretty sure Noah is a fucking zebra. I, I, this, this man is a living zebra. After today's doctor's visit, the differential diagnosis for my fatigue includes autoimmune disease, lupus. I finally had a case of lupus. CFS, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. It's hard to keep track of, so I made a nice handy little chart. Let's, let's put it up there and take a look. See if we can get an idea of the chronology of this and uh, exactly what he's suffering from. I call this my Spoonie 1 sickness timeline. You can see in, in 2009, uh, he, he's just dealing with some basic stuff. In 2010, we've got the uh, heart condition. Somewhere around 20, 
somewhere around 2012, he gets bipolar disorder and a staph infection in his nipples. Then we got three years of peace. Maybe God thought he punished him too much. I mean, a, a nipple staph infection is quite severe. So he gave him a three-year break to really to acclimate to the nipple life that he'll be living as he moves forward. And then in 2016, just everything goes fucking crazy. CFS, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, lupus, autoimmune disease, I'm just going to call it what that is, HIV, sleep apnea, shingles, kidney stone, acute bronchitis followed up next year by panic attacks you know i can i can kind of understand where those panic attacks would be coming from if i was diagnosed with 47 fucking horrific diseases all in one year i'd probably be having some fucking anxiety too now there's been a lot of speculation that spoonie's an alcoholic or that spoonie makes up excuses to get out of his responsibilities and if you were supporting him financially on like Patreon or through other means by buying merchandise, and you look at this timeline and you sync up some of the dates, a few interesting things appear. Namely that huge fucking gap that happened over the last year, year and a half, when he wasn't producing any content whatsoever, when there's just nothing going on. And, and if you line that up with 2016, what do you know? 40 fucking nine different diseases. An encyclopedia of illnesses suddenly presents itself. Is Noah making up diseases to get out of responsibilities and to make people leave him alone when he just doesn't want to fulfill his obligations? I don't know. You tell me. Can somebody have this many diseases <laughs> all at once without being a corpse? But maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit too much. Those panic attacks, at the very least, might be related to something other than the bacterial and viral zoo that Noah hosts within his body. Now, when I put up my video about Spoonie, the That Guy with the Glasses episode 2, his Patreon was sitting at this number. Today, right now, the number that he's sitting at is this. He has lost $150. If you look at his Graphion, he's lost over $150. Bucks, so that's $30 a month he's losing in revenue on average every single month. And it, it, it seems to be having a bit of an effect on Spoonie. You might even say he's, uh, he's freaking the fuck out, which might explain the panic attacks. My time is up. I'm out of money. I'm going to lose my house and everything else. I'm out of money. Bills are pouring in. No idea how I'll keep from losing the house and everything else. No man's an island, but you need to find the source of strength that works for you. You can do this. We're here for you when you're ready. I appreciate that. It's just that I'm out of time here. I just can't face the goddamn camera for some reason. I've been down here for months trying to get my head straight, and I can't. All I can think to do is hide in my bed. Every time I do, I'm afraid that for some reason, this time, I just won't wake up. Having a panic attack. I've had so many things to do. So many number one priorities, I can't even count them without feeling ill. Well, you know, shit, reading through that, it almost sounds like Noah is coming to the realization that the gravy train that he's been enjoying so much for years now is coming to an end that even with his non-stop excuses of illness after illness after illness people just aren't buying it anymore and he's he's freaking the fuck out because he can't pay his goddamn bills anymore talking about how he's going to lose everything jeez you know you know what would be a real simple fucking solution to that noah maybe make some goddamn videos hmm really makes you think how embarrassing. How embarrassing is it to watch everything you've built up crumble around you, completely collapse in on itself because of your inability to produce the things that people have become accustomed to you producing. It's one thing to want to, to move on to greener pastures, to find a new profession or a new hobby, but to just lie down and die. To lie down and die and then deceive people about why you're doing it. It's just shameful. It's shameful and it's sad. We've all heard the idioms and the phrases in the old country wisdom. Take the hit now and move on. Suffer today so you can relax tomorrow. If you don't try, you won't succeed. All those motivational phrases seem to just run off him like water on a duck's ass. Spoonie just does not give a shit. He will continue to spiral down into the dark abyss that he himself has crafted, and he has nobody but himself to blame. Now his income decreased $150 from the initial video I did until now. I guarantee that if you were to look back on this six months from now, he'll probably have gone down another 150 or it'll gotten to the point where the Patreon is just void. It's barren. The hundred so people that are left just won't support it anymore. So like I said, it's embarrassing. And speaking of embarrassing, how about an individual that seems to make that a part of his everyday repertoire? Someone who defines themselves by the retarded situations they put themselves in. The embarrassing bullshit they do on a fairly regular basis. I'm talking about Pissed Pablo there. Mr. Seven Dollar Sanchez. Fucking money! I don't even have money in my wallet! 
Yes, I do. I have seven dollars because you click on this and you fucking pocketed it. This is the only fucking shit you people care about. How, how is that? How is that for relating to your audience? Look, look at me. I'm so poor. I've only got seven dollars in my wallet. That is so relatable. He's only going to make a hundred thousand dollars instead of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Think of the plight that he put himself in. Can't you relate to that suffering, you sick, sadistic bastards? But Joe, Joe is a master of doing dumbass shit. And that's been something that he's done consistently for fucking years now. He's either doing it on his own, or he's getting trolled into it. It's one of the two. But again, it's fairly fucking consistent. How about the, uh, the VGAs, the good old video game awards? We all know how awful those things are. I can't think of one televised video game award show, regardless of its iteration or the channel that it's home to. They're always fucking awful. The banter is terrible. The award show is terrible. The, the music acts are fucking atrocious. The hosts aren't ever funny. And the awards always go to shit that they shouldn't go to. Everybody hates them. It's a common sentiment held by pretty much everybody. And a lot of people have always wondered, what would it be like? What would it be like to walk into the belly of the beast and shit where these people eat their supper? Well, Joe, Joe's no different. He had a video up bitching about a video game award show. He talked about the same thing I just brought up. The same thing that uh, everybody brings up when they talk about these fucking horrible TV shows. And he railed on and on and on about it, how it could be run better, how it could be presented better, how there could be better categories. And what do you know, fast forward one year later, and Joe finds himself in the belly of the beast. He's got that opportunity, that opportunity that shit posters always joke about. Joe's going to bring it to the man. He's going to go up to the Dorito Pope, and he's going to dethrone his ass. He's going to take that Mountain Dew scepter and the Dorito bag of holiness, and he's going to cram it right down his fucking throat. You know, except for the part where he completely makes an ass out of himself and makes Jeff Keeley look good, which is fucking remarkable. I got to make a show. Let's go. All right. He is the executive producer for the VGAs. You have a lot of questions to answer for it now. I hope that that is improvement. That's improvement. Moving along. Basically, why? Jeff. Yeah, the it's independent game, which is look, not what it is this year. You tell me the, MMO should be nominated for Game of the Year. You, you can't name the MMO, so it should be. Look, and you're telling me that you don't know who's voting on the awards when it's public. So, I mean, come on, man. You have these rants. Look, but they're look, look, look. I want you to put yourself in Joe's shoes. You've just finished bitching about how horrible this show is, how the host is a retard, and you finally get your opportunity to go to the show, and Jeff Keeley, the host, makes fun of your ass and blows you off like you're nothing, and actually makes you look like an ass for not even being prepared. You may have all the excuses in the world, and believe me, fucking Joe did, but he still got straight up burned by Jeff Keeley, which is... How do you walk away from that? And it wasn't just once that that happened. It happened a second time. Uh, so I, I did notice a lack One of PC more. gaming. And, uh, you asked me this on the red carpet. Know, it hasn't but changed. Do you think that you're going to correct it next year? Or, uh, for example, like a fighting game is missing this year as well when you have four categories for music games. Best soundtrack, best music game, best original score. It, it, no, best original score is not for music game. Red Dead's not a music game. Uh, you have best original song. Far Away is not a music game. We have a, one music game category. We have the best PC game category, too. The best soundtrack category seems like the best music game category. It seems like the same thing. So you're, uh, I mean, I don't... Use of song. There's also another category, best use of song in the game. I'm just thinking maybe these could be cut down and you could do a fighting game or a PC game. Or we do have a best PC game category. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but I'd go check out the website. All right, take care. <laughs> Joe, what are you doing? How can you go... How can you go to an award show and not know what the fucking categories are? And there's there's two things that are mildly amusing about this to me. One is he's confusing things like soundtrack with a music game. You know, what one's a game that's based around rhythm. The other award category is for best soundtrack. That that doesn't involve gameplay. No wonder Jeff thought you were fucking retarded. One's the score for the game, the music they put in there to bring the environments and the levels alive. The other is a game based around music. And they're two completely fucking different things. But he's acting like because his ears are involved with both of them. That's the same thing. Funnier still is the burn at the end. Well, we have that as a category. Maybe you should go to the fucking website. But that's just, that's enraged Enrique. He, he continually does this. He finds a way to Make himself look like a fucking buffoon. Take the lottery situation, for instance. Angry Joe's alleged criminality is a warning to others. Now, for those unfamiliar with the uh, situation as it transpired, Joe held a, a raffle. A raffle for his community where you paid an entry fee 
and you had the opportunity to win a prize. And the, the money that was gathered was going to go, as he put it, you can see on the screen cap, back into the community, whatever the fuck that means. So all these people entered, gave them all this money to hold this raffle to win prizes. But there's, there's one minor, one minor hiccup to all of that. Of course, according to Texas State Law Chapter 2002, Subchapter A, the only organization that can host raffles are religious societies, volunteer emergency medical service providers, volunteer fire departments, and qualified nonprofit organizations. Paid-for raffles like the one hosted on the Angry Joe Show would be considered unlawful, since raffles cannot be conducted by an individual, conducted by a for-profit business, or conducted by a charity that does not qualify, according to the Texas Attorney General website. Of of course, if you check the Who is data for AngryJoeShow.com, Joe Vargas has the data registered in Austin, Texas. The Angry Joe Show is also a registered affiliate partner with the multi-channel network subsidiary of Maker Studios, Polaris. Maker Studios is a for-profit organization under the Walt Disney Corporation. So to sum that up, a good old Joe hosts a fucking illegal auction uh, that he's not allowed to do. You know, whoops. Now, of course, this isn't like CSGO levels of bullshit lottery where people are getting hustled by somebody trying to be deceptive. Joe wasn't trying to be deceptive. Joe's just fucking stupid. Joe's fucking stupid like he was with Jeff Keighley, where he made an ass of himself in front of a ton of people. And here he is once again doing something dumb. Like I said, though, he, he has a tendency to do that. He has a tendency to embarrass himself either through his own motivation or through prodding from other people. Occasionally, though, uh, circumstances outside of himself will compel him to say funny things, like when Trump won the White House. That is the type of people that supported Trump. If you voted for Trump, these are, the, these are your fellow constituents. These are the type of people that voted. The, the angry, pissed-off white men. Those goddamn white men. Those angry white men. They're going to catapult my Hispanic ass right over that wall. Thanks a lot. Fuck Donald Trump. Fuck Donald Trump and fuck white people. But I suppose the biggest example of this that I can give you would be something that centered around another That Guy With The Glasses member. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with this, Jew Wario was a contributor to the website. He ended up committing suicide and a lot of the that guy with the glasses, people ended up talking about it. You know, leaving memorial messages, uh, mentioning it in different ways, and talking about the relationship with it. Well, Joe himself made a memorial video talking about Jew Wario, and, you know, seems pretty torn up about it. But as I had said earlier, Joe either embarrasses himself, or he gets, he gets kind of diverted off into it through very obvious trolling. And this would be a really clear-cut example of that, because... Immediately after putting up the memorial video, rumors started to swirl, saying that Angry Joe had monetized this memorial video to Jew Wario, that he was doing it to make money, that this RIP video was money whoring. And that rumor still gets brought up to this day, years later. If you go to certain subreddits, you'll see people talking about it still, talking about Angry Joe monetizing this video. And there are a fair amount of screen caps of him in the comment section getting very, very angry about this allegation. Pieces of shit trolling this video have been banned from the channel. It's best not to engage with them in the future. They thrive off drama. Memorial videos are prime targets to get attention showered on their sad existence. They will say anything so that people will talk to them. Try your best not to. This video is not being monetized, and has never been so. Their drama feeding has no basis. Damaged as they are, nothing you say will change their behavior or attempting to reason with them is futile. Honestly, they are already putting some of the worst, most indefensible shit on a video like this showing you just how ugly the internet can be hiding behind their anonymity. This video is about Justin. And Justin knew, just like we all do, no matter how hard they try, trolls never amount to anything other than nuisances. So there's Joe. He's acknowledging that this is, uh, trolling. But he's getting upset about it. And he talks about it in multiple places. And he might notice a name, a familiar name, perhaps, pop up when he's talking about this. Like on his Facebook. And I never monetized my memorial video, you prick. No matter how much you fucking Photoshop it and put up doctored screenshots. At Manly Tears. Manly Tears, honestly, man, you were 100% wrong about me meeting Jew Wario once. But you won't admit to that, will you? That I'm purposely monetizing off my dead friend, of course I'm going to call you out on your fucking bullshit lies problem? It would appear as if a certain Brit Bong uh, managed to rile Joe up quite a bit. Now, it's understandable his, his friend died, but you get the idea of where this might have started, where this uh, rumor might have originated, and all the previous videos that have been uploaded saying they have proof that it was monetized and that this really happened, they're all pulled. They're associated with accounts that aren't on YouTube anymore, or social media accounts on platforms like Facebook or Twitter that just aren't there anymore. 
all you'll find are bits and pieces and allegations popping up, you know, here or there. Now, do I personally believe that uh, Angry Joe monetized his memorial video? I, I have no fucking clue. I wasn't paying attention to him when this all transpired, and I haven't really seen any evidence that he ever did. But he gets really fucking pissed off if you accuse him of it. He will ban you, block you, and bitch at you if you even hint at it. And since we're on the subject of hints, subtle little clues that are left all about, let's talk about another That Guy With The Glasses member. Hmm? I, I wonder who it could be. Could it be the Fedora Lord? Our, our savior, Lightbringer? Lightbringer Linkar? Why, maybe it could be. Now, in the uh, previous video, I talked about his Literotica account and some of the dirt that was uncovered by the TV board on 4chan, where they tracked down his user accounts and his pornography preferences. But I left out a, a crucial piece of the backstory when it comes to Linkara, and that would be the relationship that he was in. Now, Linkara found himself a, a nice little lady, a little lady by the name of Iron Liz. Now, he dated Liz for for a while there, for a couple of years until they broke up, I think sometime in late 2011. Now, one of the things you need to know about Liz and one of the subtle clues that goes back to Linkar's preferences and uh, pornographic material would be that Liz is a transsexual. She is uh, fully transitioned now as we speak, but when she was dating Linkara, that wasn't the case. If you look at the Encyclopedia Dramatica page, they cite a interview with Lord Cat. Lord Cat, an ex that guy with the glasses.com contributor, managed to get Iron Liz to appear on his stream, where she revealed that she used to be a man to nobody's surprise. However, Liz also explained that she was a pre-op transsexual and they were dating, and Linkara had been aware of it since their second date. And if that wasn't enough, Liz also believed that Linkara was gay. Linkara's response? Liz has always been a woman. The fact that she has a man's body doesn't matter. <laughs> I am straight. Now, why would, that, uh, why would that have a bearing on his pornography preferences? Well, I glossed over it a little bit in that previous video. I mean, we had a, we had a good laugh at uh, his lust for big, throbbing black cocks, but I wasn't able to share with you some of the artwork that Linkara was uh, very fond of when looking at those older accounts. Now, because YouTube is a Christian uploading website, I can't, uh, I can't show this in its full glory. You're going to have to look at the censored pic. And I will give you an idea of what's going on here. We've got uh, we've got a few superheroes. There's Wonder Woman, uh, Power Girl, and Supergirl. Uh, they seem to be in a bear hug. Now, underneath that censored bar, if I were to best try to describe this for you, uh, there's a sword fight going on. Except none of these ladies is using a saber. That uh, that that sword they're swinging's uh, a hefty piece of meat. A hefty piece of meat. They're all inter entwined with one another. And that uh, that was Linkar's preference. So when the Lightbringer is telling you that he's a nasty little cock slut, he, he fucking means it. Linkara lusts after dick. Uh, you can see that in his dating preferences and in his porn preferences. I have a feeling he liked Iron Liz because uh, she was packing more than he was. I get the feeling Linkara would have been right at home at the D-board. And don't let that header fool you. Hentai alternative is bullshit. This is an etchy or A or H. That D stands for fucking dick girl. And I know I'm I'm terrible. How could I be making fun of this? What what's funny about a man's love? How can I how can I pick on Linkara for uh, his preference in giant throbbing lady cocks? But it's not like him being an asshole here and saying, "Hey everybody, Linkara is a plagiarist who lifts other people's work and tries to pass it off as his own." Like if you were to go to I Mockery and look at Tales from the Long Box, particularly pieces written by Proto Clown, and then compare it to Linkara's early written reviews and early video reviews from 2007 to 2009, and you'd spot similarities of lifted analysis, jokes, structuring, and overall themes. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying Linkara is a fucking dirty lying thief that takes other people's work and passes it off as his own. That would be mean. That would be really cruel of me to say. So I'm not, I'm not saying that. Quite the uh, diverse cast of characters that inhabit this website, the people associated with it, all seemingly have little characteristics that make them a little bit uh, off-kilter, a little left of normal. Whether that's running illegal lotteries, getting arrested for public intoxication, having enough illnesses to be quarantined for life, lusting after tranny cock, living in the shadows of a woman's apartment underneath her stairs and refusing to leave even though she got fucking married, trying again and again and again to insert shitty comedy skits into videos nobody wants to see because they just want to hear you do a review. The list seemingly goes on and on, but it does raise one question. Who is in charge at Channel Awesome? Who is the Tard Wrangler responsible for driving the short bus to work every day? Because somebody has to do it. Somebody has to run after these people and pick up the shit that drops from their ass because they seemingly are incapable of doing that themselves. Well, that responsibility would fall on uh, three people. 
two of whom are the Walker brothers. But the other is not really talked about a lot publicly. That would be Mike Mashad. So what exactly is out there? in regards to who Mike Mashad is. What, what do we know about good old Mike? Well, he is the sole proprietor and creator of Bar Fiesta. If you haven't heard of it, don't worry, fucking nobody has. That was his little pet project. It was going to be the big thing where all the adults go. You know, we're going to scope out bars and tell you where to go and what nightlife's out there. Maybe integrate an app into that later on, make a little bit of dosh on it. That uh, pretty much fell flat on its fucking face after about a year. So aside from creating really fucking horrible ideas like Bar Fiesta, what, what else does Mike do? What's his uh, personality like? Well, an insider, that's in uh, quotation marks because you can never really tell, showed up on the TV board on 4chan to give a little insight into who Mike Mashad is. Now you may be asking, well, how can we trust this? This is a uh, insider, quotation marks. Uh, how, do, how do you know it's accurate? Well, you don't. Y you never know, do you? But it does seem to line up to what we know about Mashad and some things that are going to be raised in a few minutes here. Very little is known about Mike Mashad. Give any details you have on him? He's very awkward. I know it's a buzzword, but he's pretty aspergery. He has a very heavy lisp, speech impediment, and is super shy. They were doing pretty well financially, so he probably is good at running the company. Mike Mashad is socially retarded. Now, I can't really say how well Mashad's running the company. I mean, they did have to do that fucking Indiegogo. They did a bunch of fundraising things. So if the money was really rolling in, they wouldn't have to be begging their viewers for it. But, you know, maybe he's okay at it. Then again, somebody who was associated with the website, who I've spoken to previously years and years and years ago, I don't want to give away who it is, so I'll use this uh, stock photo in their stead. Maybe the internet detectives out there will be able to piece it together. It's a really, a really difficult clue to follow, I'm sure. But uh, this individual didn't really have high praise, particularly for Mike Mashad. If, if I remember right, he put it something like, That guy's a fucking cunt who's so goddamn stupid he couldn't walk and chew bubblegum. Did you see Bar Fiesta? What a fucking fiasco that was. That's Mike Mashad. Dumb fucking ideas, terrible execution, falling flat on his fat fucking face time and time again. He doesn't know how to manage talent. He doesn't know how to get along with the people working under him. He's pretty much socially inept. So we have two different sources, one an anonymous uh, insider and somebody I've personally spoken to in the past, both of whom seem to have a, a viewpoint, an idea that Mike Mashad's kind of fucking dumb, that he's uh, not very good at managing people. But how bad is that mismanagement? So Allison Obscura Lupa's Skype conversations with Mike Mashad were posted to Imager to prove what she said in her blog. Said conversations were posted to the Channel Awesome page on Facebook. Several of the responses are along the lines of, you can't post these, they're private conversations. Never mind that, one, no, pretty sure they were obtained legally, considering Allison herself mentioned them on her blog post. Two, the blog post itself might not be enough proof for some people. And three, holy crap, why do you care more about an exploiter's privacy over justice for the exploitee? Now, this Tumblr post is referencing another Tumblr post that was put up by a former That Guy With The Glasses contributor, Obscurus Lupa. That particular blog isn't available anymore, but the Imager account is, and it gives a little bit of insight what it's like to communicate with the management at That Guy With The Glasses when you're talent on their website, specifically what it's like to interact with Mike Mashad. Can you talk now? Since you won't take a call and you're ignoring us, we have no other option than to inform you that you will no longer be publishing your content on ChannelAwesome.com. All your past content will be removed from the site as of today. I was away from the computer, but thanks for the firing in the meantime. I'm glad 15 minutes was all it took. Of course, you guys are always available within 15 minutes of asking. So Mike Mashad shit can somebody because they didn't respond quickly enough on Skype. Within 15 minutes, this person had taken a break and they were fired because they didn't immediately respond. But it's not just the time frame in which you get back to Mike Mashad. Other issues pop up that uh, he has a little difficulty grasping. Mike, how are we being hypocrites when we are allowing other things to go on the site, Indiegogos, that aren't ours? If we just allowed ours and said no to everyone else, yes, we would be hypocrites. Because you told me it was an executive authority, and that's why Patreons weren't allowed. Now it is. We can continue this in a side chat if you wish. No, I'd rather talk about it in here. Then I'm not going to continue at this point. That's fine then. All you do is make excuses so you're not at fault. Mike removed Hope Chapman from this conversation. Well, hey, at the very least, he did it within 15 minutes, so you can't really fault him on that one. 
So essentially to sum up, if you don't respond quickly enough, Mike Mashad will fire you. If you bring up the fact that they make executive decisions which run contrary to what they've told everybody else in the past, Mike Mashad will shit can you and remove you from conversations. And he always wants it to be private. He doesn't want it to be a public conversation that can be brought up later on. And that's not just a one-off thing, these insights into how Mashad is and how he runs the website. It's a fact that's been repeatedly stated over and over and over again. Jason Lord Cat Palera offered similar sentiments about the mismanagement of the website, especially when asked what the administrators could have done to fix the problems and save blistered thumbs. After leaving Channel Awesome and realizing just how much of a clusterfuck it actually was, there was nothing that could save blistered thumbs. The management at Channel Awesome is either completely incompetent or they are criminals. I have not concluded what my opinion is yet. You have to understand that there is zero communication from management to everyone else. Rob, Doug, and Mike will tell a few of their friends what they're thinking of doing, and will leave it up to them to spread rumors via a Skype chat. Yorski mentioned, Even before Blistered Thumbs launched, Channel Awesome made a number of promises that were never delivered upon. Even years later, compensation is obviously the big one. In fact, Mika states, Austin was promised by that guy with the glasses that he was going to get the next generation consoles to staff writers for them to review, which could potentially bring that traffic back up, and they fucked him over on it. They didn't give him the money that he needed to get these things. So all of a sudden, he was promised and expecting these consoles for launch that they were going to get for him, and they just never ponied up the money, and they had no intentions to do so, either. So they lied to him. So everything he had worked on just went to shit. Nevertheless, I was told that it would be difficult to get in touch with Mike Mashad because he's not necessarily press-friendly. Polera had stated, Mashad himself doesn't actually make any company statements, set any goals, provide a vision, or execute any sort of leadership within the company. He's busy spending 12 hours a day playing on Xbox Live. At least that's what he did when I was around. When management is that bad, any product you launch is going to be equally as terrible. Now those statements come from an interview that was up on One Angry Gamer called The Fall of Blistered Thumbs, Mismanagement, and Despair, which again feature former contributors from That Guy with the Glasses. And what's the common thread amongst all of these things when you look at the Obscura Lupus Imager accounts, when you look at the anonymous person on the TV board, the former contributor that talked to me personally, Lord Cat and others that were associated with That Guy with the Glasses and Blistered Thumbs? It's that Mike Mashad doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He mismanages things. He doesn't handle it properly. He can't communicate with his staff well, and he promises things he doesn't deliver on, or he makes statements about what the policies are and immediately changes his mind in other specific scenarios. So is it really all Mike Mashad's fault? Is he the core issue with the mismanagement that seemingly is going on at Channel Awesome? All this former talent coming out and laying it at Mike's feet, saying that uh, he's basically responsible for all the fuck-ups that have happened over the years at the website. Well, not necessarily because there are two other people that are involved at the higher levels, the Walker brothers. Now, going back to the anonymous insider, he gives some insight into what it's like to be around the Walker brothers and what Doug is like as an individual. Rob Walker thinks he's a big shot. The Walker brothers fight a lot. Is Rob Walker a bully, like he appears to be in the the behind-the-scenes videos? He was nice in hiring me, but definitely acted like a big shot on set. I would definitely believe that he's a bully. Most of the people they work with are pretty nerdy, and he is very forceful. He and his brother Doug argue a lot, probably more than you would think. They got in some huge fight over using a song in one scene and refused to talk to each other for the rest of the day. You can tell they have brother issues and both want to be in charge. He thinks he's the next Spielberg. I know you've kind of touched base with this, but how delusional did everyone seem? Did they know the movie was a piece of shit, or did they think it was a masterpiece in the making? Some were very aware of what was going on. I could tell Kevin, Brad, Joe, and the Mickey guy were just there for fun. There were some that were totally delusional. Don't want to harp on this guy, but the movie seemed to be the high point of Lankara's career. Like he felt like he made it, and was a real entertainer or comedian or whatever. Doug is definitely delusional. The guy thinks he's the next Spielberg. I should talk about Doug Walker. The guy was baffling to me. When I got hired, I thought it would be like any other freelance job, but it wasn't at all. Walker really had no technical skills whatsoever. I was expecting the typical B-movie shit, but he had nothing. It was like movies I made with my friends back in middle school. You can see that when you watch it. It really baffled me that a guy with so little experience training could get such a large project together with like 30 people from all over the country slash world. There are guys out there who make a real professional movie with half of the budget that he was working with. It's just bizarre how old he is, but how crappy of a filmmaker he is. I guess he got started late. We shot a lot outside Kevin's house in Malassia. Kevin used to let us go in and use the bathroom and stuff. 
Once when we were together at the end of the day, Doug acted all awkward and said he had an announcement to make. I thought he was going to want us to stay late or something, but it turned out someone went into Kevin's fridge and ate food out of it. And Kevin complained to Doug. It could have been funny, but Doug was so awkward that it was just the cringiest shit ever. Biggest regret from the film, I never found out who did it or what it was, but I like to pretend it was Spoonie and a ham sandwich. My bison costume, king of spaghetti. I wish I had more Spoonie stories, but the dude was MIA most of the time. I saw some good fallout from one. Doug and Mad Scientist Spoonie have a fight that I wasn't at, and apparently Spoonie played too rough and ripped Doug's M. Bison cape. They got in a fight that was bad enough that no one would tell me the details of. The next day I shot with them and they refused to look at each other or do anything other than grumble. When Spoonie's scene was done, Doug told Rob that Spoonie was being unprofessional. Lesson, it's unprofessional to rip a 30-year-old man's M. Bison costume cape while play fighting for your low-budget movie. Interestingly enough, there's actually a lot of behind-the-scenes footage, at least for the first anniversary brawl and a few of the other videos that that guy with the glasses did. Now, I can't really speak to Rob Walker being a bully, but I can talk about Doug Walker being awkward or cringy as fuck, especially if you watch that first anniversary brawl. He is uh, really trying his hardest to come off as professional when it's just kind of a goofy fucking thing that nobody's really putting a lot of effort or thought into. So when the insider talks about him wanting to be the next Spielberg or seeing himself as bigger than he is, you definitely pick that vibe up. You, you really get a feel for that when you watch that behind-the-scenes footage. Sadly, there's no archival footage of the bison cape getting torn. I'm sure that would have been, that would have been fucking great, but it, it's not out there. So we'll just have to take this anonymous insider's word for it. When you sit back and take a, a really good look at that guy with the glasses and the assorted talent that's been on the website over the years, you realize that it played a somewhat important role in internet history. I know that sounds ridiculous saying that out loud, but it is sort of true. These people in this website were some of the first to really go out there and do what they did, well before YouTube monetization, well before everybody had a Patreon up and asking for money. They were the forerunners of the professional content creator and played a part in shaping how content is dealt out now. It's moved from just being a hobby where people put up videos because they like to put up videos to a means of actually obtaining revenue and supporting yourself or turning it into a profession. It's fucking retarded, but that's the direction that it went in. And it went that way in part because of these people. And while they've left behind a library of videos that they've produced over the years, a lot of the stories seem to get lost in the shuffle. Somebody posts on an image board, or there's a Facebook post, or somebody tweets something out, and then the account gets shut down and it's lost forever. So if anything, I hope this series helped to capture some of the peripheral actions that were going on that you might have missed if you weren't directly looking for it. Each of these content producers is flawed. I mean, everybody is. We all have our foibles and follies. So you can't ignore that. We have little idiosyncrasies that, that make us obnoxious to some degree. The difference is between the average person and the people at That Guy with the Glasses is they wanted to be internet celebrities. They put themselves out there, and all of their activities, for the most part, have been archived. And that information, you can take it however you want it. You can view it as a cautionary tale, you can use it as a story to get a laugh, because God knows there are enough laughs and punchlines with these people that you'll be entertained for fucking years. Or you can simply appreciate the content they put out for you to consume. But I think for me personally, what, what really hits home, what really fucks with my head, is that this website and these people have taken up a portion of my life, a, a piece of my lifespan that I can actually, I can actually recognize. I, I, can, I can put fucking chronology to this. And that's, uh, that's spooky as shit. I suppose it highlights the impact that the internet is starting to have on us. We used to be able to tie different mediums of entertainment, whether they were movies or music or television shows, to different periods of our lifetime. Now that the internet has really started to get going, that we have video platforms that deliver content on a daily basis, we're starting to integrate that and replace different pieces of media that used to mark the time. Where your parents might have said, I used to watch this TV show during this time period, I remember that song it used to play on the radio. Or you may say, God, I remember that game from my childhood. Your children, your fucking kids may actually say, I remember the Nostalgia Critic, I grew up with that. And that is some spooky fucking shit. Welcome to the new era. All right, there we go. Let me let me just first off say this. I fucking hate credit sequences. I've, I've tried repeatedly 
throughout all of these videos to make a decent credit sequence, and it just is not going to fucking happen. They're either too long, or they're jittery, or they're off-center, or something is fucked up and doesn't play right, and it, it it's just... I, I have no idea. I can't program a VCR, apparently. I'm like some 80-year-old fucking woman that's incapable of doing this shit. The technology eludes me. That's why I put that nice little uh, fin cut in there, because now you know where it is. Now we're into the credit sequence. You can turn the video off, unless you're a patron. In which case, wait for your name to pop up. It should be alphabetical. It should be listed there alphabetically. Now, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to talk about. Uh, there's no other videos coming up. I mean, we're done. That Guy with the Glasses, the series, is done. And let me just be the first to say, I'm never doing that again. This was a disastrous decision on my part. Not that the subject matter wasn't entertaining. It, it was. I, I enjoyed talking about all the dumb exploits they do. All the stupid shit the different people on the website have gotten up to. But I, I think it just, it doesn't work for me. It, it just, uh, I don't know, it, it threw me off somehow. When I'm not just making something because I want to make it, but making it because I've given given my word that I'm going to make it, it just, I, it gets twisted. I can't really put it better than that. I, I've tried my best to make them entertaining and to, to fill them up with uh, facts and insights that you would uh, find entertaining and to talk about the fucking train wreck that these people are. But um, nev never again. Never going to do that again. Uh, I, I put this up initially, I held a poll when I first started the Patreon account, asking people what they wanted. What do you want to see me do? And the poll results were pretty clear. People wanted to see a That Guy With The Glasses series because I talked about it a long fucking time ago. And that's what the majority of the votes got, and since I keep my word, there you go. So the series is complete. Maybe I should have done it differently. Maybe condense it into a few videos? I, I don't know. Hindsight is 20 fucking 20. But, you know, here we are. It's been seven months, but it's done. Each of the little parts came along, and, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'd say looking at the overall thing, I'm probably happy with half of them, I, I guess, if I had to put it that way. I, I like half of them. The other, the other half, not so sure about. But that's just me being straightforward with you. I want to go back to doing the... <laughs> I want to go back to doing the videos that I want to do, and I think they uh, turn out better when I do them that way. Who, who knows? Who knows? So we've got a, a lot of a lot of names coming by. Hopefully this time they're fucking legible. I just, I, I like I said, I can't seem to get this right. I, I pray to fucking God, whatever God is out there, Dean Esme, tutor tutor me in this. I know you're the religious scholar now, right, Dean? Tutor me, the, uh, tutor me in this. Which uh, god do I pray to? I, I don't know. I don't know. So uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll read off some of the names here of the people that uh, paid for this train wreck. <laughs> Should we do that? Should we read the names of the people that paid for this fucking train wreck of a, a series to come through? Let's, uh, let's try that. See if I can get some zingers in there. El Doctoro. El Doctoro. I'm going to need some fucking doctors after this get my sanity adjusted for ever agreeing to do this. Eraserhead is a bad movie, you know it. I don't think I've ever watched Eraserhead. I'm familiar with it, but I've never actually committed to sitting down and watching it. Fire safety. Always want to be fire conscious. Fire safety squads. Good looking out. Good looking out. Frodo Epstein. Apparently hobbits can be Jews. Didn't know that. Fuck niggers. Always nice to have a... Uh, a multicultural minded individual as a Patreon donor. Thank you very much, fuck niggers. A gay ISIS. Don't want to forget about gay ISIS or his friend goddamn CIA niggers. I have a very interesting group of individuals. Goyim the Barbarian. I'm probably gonna get I'm probably gonna get thrown off of YouTube just for the fucking credit sequence. HP Fuckcraft. I, I don't know what kind of Eldritch horror lurks in an HP Fuckcraft novel but it's probably got something to do with tentacles. It works that way. It's multi-layered. Multi-layered. There's, there's depth to it. Uh, Hugh Meme. I didn't know Dino Dino was a uh, contributor. I'm, very to know, I'm glad to know that. I'm very proud of my Jewish heritage. 
That's, uh, I, I wonder how that's going to line up with the other people that are donating on here when we compare that to, I'm sure, some of the names that are going to pop up. I'm surprised nobody's taken the name Holocaust Champion or something to that effect. Maybe next time. <laughs> Maybe next time. James Russell's. No, there's no joke there. I'm just... If, if you don't get something good, you got nothing. Look at the uh, bananas, though. Let the banana distract you. And the open mouth. The banana and the open mouth should distract you until I get a funny name to read. Because we've got... Uh, fuck, how much time do... we got six minutes to fill. I set this at a slower speed because I wanted to get everybody's name legible. I hope to fuck this paid off. I hope this finally actually works. Johnny Joestar. You know, I, I just started watching JoJo. Uh, not uh, not bad. I'm actually enjoying it. I've been binge watching that on Hulu. Actually turned out to be uh, a good choice. It's a uh, show that's not complete dog shit, which has been fucking forever for me. But uh, there we go. Kawaii Firekeeper. How would the Firekeeper know if she's Kawaii? Isn't she blind? I don't know, I'm not up to date on the deepest lore when it comes to all the Souls games. So I'm going to probably have like 48 fucking nerds yelling at me, telling me, that's the wrong Souls game, Jam. You don't you don't know which Souls game you're talking about. Kelberg Shekelstein. It's uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to imagine that mixture of nationalities to give you that name, Mr. Shekelstein. <laughs> Oh, see, and I'm, or, I'm already losing gas here. I'm, I'm already losing gas here. Little Timmy. Thank you very much, Little Timmy, for donating. I hope you enjoyed... I hope you enjoyed the show. Moon Muffin. Little known fact, Moon Muffin is actually Moon Man's younger sister. In case you didn't know that. Just, uh, just throwing that out there. Marco Antonio Borellis Jr. It's a hell of a name. And I did not time that to come up with the uh, Piss Pablo. That's just a coincidence. I am not, uh... <laughs> I just, I'm not doing anything here. I'm a good guy. Matthew Itovich. One of my Russian comrades. Hopefully uh, he's enjoying himself on vacation after hacking the U.S. election. That's what we all know the uh, Russians have been up to, apparently. Medicare show my name jerk. Well, there you go. Your name has not only been shown, but it's been said. You can't get up my ass about that anymore. I took this as a CV, or CSV, whatever the fucking file is, right from Patreon. So, <laughs> if your name's not shown, go bitch at Patreon, because this is a list they gave me. Not my fault. Your name has been shown and said now. Moon Man, Moon Man. Well, we were just talking about his little sister, and there he is. Probably looking for that Shekelstein guy from about, you know, two minutes up. Maybe I'll catch him, maybe he won't. We'll never know. I just, I love these facial expressions. The fucking fedoras and the glasses. and It just really, it really, it really fits the aesthetics, doesn't it? And I, I'm, stu I'm stumbling and stuttering and it sounds terrible, doesn't it? Because I'm just, I'm fucking watching this playback and I'm just talking directly over it. So you enjoy that fucking clusterfuck. Obvious Twole. But, you know, maybe if Britbong had used that as the name, Angry Joe wouldn't have gone off on him repeatedly about obviously fucking with him. But I, I guess I guess uh, that that's not how that played out. It didn't, uh, didn't play out. Oh, God, I just want to take a nap. Phil Burnell... Darkseid Phil donates to me? Oh, and what a, what a picture choice he chose. Very brave. Stunning and brave, Phil. Don't live that shame down. Just embrace it. Just fucking... Look at all the rabbis. Rabble, <laughs> Rabbi Steinberg and Rabbi uh, Deedington. Couple of rabbis coming by. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I'll send you those uh, foreskins later. Wink, wink. Roasty Genocide? <laughs> oh, fuck.
Ryan Dunn goofed. Well, you did fuck up, Ryan. You should be, you should be fucking ashamed. I don't know what you're doing. You, you done goofed. It's, uh, it's sad. It's sad and shameful. I'm gonna light a cigarette. You're gonna hear a lighter going off. Fuck it. I'm gonna record it directly into it. I don't give a shit. Ah, there we go. Nothing like some good old-fashioned lung cancer. Gotta really, uh, really inhale that shit. Make, uh, <laughs> make the cancer doctor earn his paycheck. Sean King. And again, a stunning picture. Thank you, Sean King, for giving me... Oh, Shlomo Shekelberg and Shlomo Bergstein. I guess they're looking for the rabbis. They're, again, about a minute up. Try to catch him before Moon Man does. I know he's hunting somebody else down right now, but you can never be too safe. No, my mic didn't die. I just, I have nothing interesting to say. I'm, I'm very proud of you for toughing it out this long. Unless you're looking for your name in the alphabetical list, in which case, you probably want me to shut the fuck up. Hopefully, like the music track I overlaid. What are you going to do? The Plague. Feels like my throat has the plague right now from recording all this shit over and over and over. Thug Life Saga. I wonder if Thug Life Saga's ever run into Lindsay Ellis when she's in county lockup. Here she's a crazy bitch, likes to kick out fucking police <laughs> police windows and bash her head into the side of the car. Now we're getting uh, we're getting down there. The list is uh, the list is dropping. We're getting to the last couple of names here. Holy shit! And it it looks. God, please, I fucking pray that this looks good. I I hope it's legible. Just, uh, just uh, wasting money, which is no truer name for a Patreon donor ever. That is, uh, fucking perfect. A perfect, where's the video, Jim? Surprise, buddy, you're in the video. Yurisuka liked me so much they did it twice. Thank you, Yurisuka. I, uh, I appreciate that fucking dedication. Cyclone Ben, what a way to end it.